Good afternoon. Welcome to everyone who has gathered here at St. Michael's to celebrate the 32nd Sunday in Ordinary Time. Please stand as you are able. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. May the grace and peace of Jesus the Lord, may the love of God, may the communion of the Holy Spirit always be with you. And with your spirit. We come as a thankful people, people of God, people of St. Michael's, and of the Together as One, I think that's the right name, for your area Catholic community. As we begin the Lord's Day, and as we remember God's faithfulness to us always. I am a substitute for your pastor who is out in the woods looking for four-legged creatures. I am not such a hunter, but he, I am glad that he was able to, to be there this weekend. I am Father Ralph Zimmerman. I'm a retired priest of the diocese living in, uh, in Sauk Rapids in Spelt's house. So I had to come across the river into, um, uh, uh, into Stearns County from Benton County, and Homeland Security let me through, so I'm, I'm fine. <laughs> I'm delighted to be able to help Father Timothy uh, in this weekend here. It's been a very long time since I've been at St. Michael's. I was in Wade Park for a while at St. Joseph's in my ministry, but it's good to be together. We come as a thankful people. The church invites us to now, as the church year ends, to listen with Jesus and to go walk with Jesus on that, on that journey he is on. And he is always meeting people along the way. We'll meet another such person uh, in the gospel today. Let's open our hearts to the word of God and come to the table of the Lord. Lord Jesus, you call us to be faithful, thankful people. You give us strength and hope, love and mercy, pardon and peace. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy upon us, forgive us of all of our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Amen.
let's pray. Almighty and merciful God, graciously keep us from all adversity, that unhindered in mind and body alike, we may pursue in freedom of heart the things that are yours. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the first book of Kings. In those days, Elijah the prophet went to Zarephath. As he arrived at the entrance of the city, a widow was gathering sticks there. He called out to her, Please bring me a small cupful of water to drink. She left to get it, and he called out after her, Please bring along a bit of bread. She answered, As the Lord your God lives, I have nothing baked. There is only a handful of flour in my jar and a little oil in my jug. Just now, I was collecting a couple of sticks to go in and prepare something for myself and my son. When we have eaten it, we shall die. Elijah said to her, Do not be afraid. Go and do as you propose. But first, make me a little cake and bring it to me. Then you can prepare something for yourself and your son. For the Lord, the God of Israel, says, The jar of flour shall not go empty, nor the jug of oil run dry, until the day when the Lord sends rain upon the earth. She left and did as Elijah had said. She was able to eat for a year, and she and her son as well. The jar of flour did not go empty, nor the jug of oil run dry. As the Lord had foretold through Elijah, the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God.
A reading from the letter to the Hebrews. Christ did not enter into a sanctuary made by hands, a copy of the true one, but heaven itself, that he might now appear before God on our behalf, not that he might offer himself repeatedly as the high priest enters each year into the sanctuary with blood that is not his own. If that were so, he would have had to suffer repeatedly from the foundation of the world. But now, once for all, he has appeared at the edge of ages to take away sin by, the sac- by his sacrifice, just as it is appointed that human beings die once, and after this the judgment, so also Christ, offered once to take away the sins of many, will appear a second time, not to take away sin, but to bring salvation to those who eagerly await him. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading of the Holy Gospel according to Mark. Glory to you, Lord. In the course of his teaching, Jesus said to the crowds, Beware of the scribes who like to go around in long robes and accept greetings in the marketplaces seats of honor in synagogues, and places of honor at banquets. They devour the houses of widows and, as a pretext, recite lengthy prayers. They will receive a very severe condemnation. He sat down opposite the treasury and observed how the crowd put money into the treasury. Many rich people put in large sums. A poor widow also also came and put in two small coins worth a few cents. Calling the disciples to himself, he said to them, Amen, I say to you, this poor widow put in more than all the other contributors to the treasury. For they have contributed from their surplus wealth, but she, from her poverty, has contributed all she had, her whole livelihood. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise Praise to you, Lord Lord Jesus Jesus Christ. Christ. Over the course of many, many Sundays now, and as we are concluding the church year in just a couple of weeks, 
we met a lot of different people along the way. And Mark's very short gospel, which has been our companion all year long, has introduced us to a few of them. Remember, maybe Zacchaeus and Bartimaeus and others. Today we meet two widows. One a long time before the coming of, of Jesus, and the other in his own time in the, in the temple. The widow from Zarephath helped the prophet Elijah, giving all she had and then some more, and then having great, great, great wealth afterwards. But they had more in, more in common than the fact that they were both widows. They both had a complete dependence on God and a trust in God that God would give them all they need, a profound trust. They give us a shining example of that complete dependence on God. And we ask ourselves, how do we trust in God? How do we depend on God? And for the, for the Christian, for all of us, and for, for us in, 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 as disciples of Jesus, we always give away what we do not need from our own livelihood. Not so much from our extras or from the leftovers. Anyone can do that. But Christian discipleship means also stewardship, and that means we give our best to God. And we trust that God will give us all that we need. God never, never disappoints us. And I can tell you, people of God, that being good stewards of God's gifts, that stewardship is so important. I moved off of there before I fell off. <laughs> I'm not used to this, 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 uh, this uh, particular setting. Uh, good stewards give from, from our, 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 not our necessarily our surplus, what's left over, and we're not tippers. We rather, we are giving all to God, generously, from the very, very, very uh, essence of our lives. And we know that God returns so very, very much more. And by the way, we don't pay God. We give back to God what God has already given to us. The widow in the time of, of Elijah, the prophet, the widow of Zarephath, had so little food, she was going to prepare the last of it for her son, and then they would die. And the prophet said, would you give me that? And she put her trust in God. And, and after a while, the jar of oil and the flour canister never were empty again. The widow in the temple that Jesus points out to his disciples after he gives a very strong, strong message to the scribes and Pharisees who are in their long robes, pardon me, in their long robes and, and giving people very difficult burdens, saying simply, this widow who put in her two cents worth, and that's what we would say, it is, it's a very small little coin, she put in two of them. She gave all that she had much more valuable than the big sums of money others were putting in. She depended on God that God would give her all that she needed. And Jesus pointed her out and made her a shining example. Our call is to be just as generous, just as confident in God, just as dependent on God. Some weeks ago now, the church began a very important process called the, the synod on synodality, and we're learning what that word means. It's a word that might be, might be familiar to us. Pope Paul VI, 50 years ago, began to use the process that the church could decide things by listening to everyone and by using that, that listening process to see where is God leading us today. And that synod, that synod on synodality is, is inviting us all to remember we are dependent on God and to give God the very best of our lives. What is God trying to speak to us today? This is the time when and we're rapidly, of course, approaching uh, Thanksgiving and the Advent Christmas season, a time of generous giving. Many people ask us to help them these days. This is the time of harvest, and we are bringing it in bringing in the harvest. We are a thankful people, as we sang at the beginning of our, of our liturgy today. God has given us so much. Our return should be as generous, first and best, just like those two widows. 
won a very long time before Christ in ancient Palestine, and the one who Jesus showed was a shining example to his disciples of how to be generous with God. We stand together now to profess our faith, the faith we share with all of God's people, the faith we profess together. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God. Light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father, through him all things reign. For us, for our salvation, he came down from heaven, and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary, and became man. For our sake he was crucified on Pontius Pilate, who suffered death and was buried, and rose again on the third day, in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and seated at the right hand of the Father, and then in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church, I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. We are proud to profess together this faith of ours. To God we now offer our prayers of thankfulness, of praise, and these particular petitions and needs. For God's chosen people in every land, that they might persevere in the face of apathy or persecution, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For a just and civil society, and that all those who govern might work diligently to bring it about, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all first responders and those who treat the injured and ill, that they might be protected and blessed in the work they do. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For ourselves that strengthened by the sacraments, we might dedicate our entire lives to following Jesus. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That God will grant healing and strength to all those who suffer from human illness in body, mind, or spirit. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those recorded in the Book of Remembrance, for Kay Othman, for whom this Mass is offered, and for all those who have died, may they rejoice in eternal life with the risen Christ. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all our own intentions, which we now offer to God in silent prayer, For all of these needs, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Join us in praying for our sister parish. Creator God, you made this world and saw that it was good. In your creation, you have gifted us with many cultures. Through this diversity, there is much that you can teach us in our relationships with each other. Today, the Holy Spirit inspires us to new global connections with the message of love throughout the world. We ask that you continue to bless our sister parish relationship between Blessed Sacrament of Orient and Kenya and the churches of St. Michael, St. Cloud, and St. Joseph's of Wake Park. 
We ask this through the, the one who united himself to the whole human race and who walks with us as we all go to you together, our brother and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Pray now, my sisters and my brothers in Christ, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Father Almighty. May the Lord accept sacrifice in your hands for the grace and glory of his name, for our and the world of the Church. Amen. O Lord, look with favor, we pray, upon the sacrificial offerings given here, that celebrating in the mystery of the passion of your Son, we may honor it with loving devotion. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. 
Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our salvation, our duty, always and everywhere, O God, to give you thanks. Holy God, creator of the world and source of all life. For you never forsake the works of your wisdom, but by your providence, even now are at work in our midst. With mighty hand and outstretched arm, you led your people Israel through the desert. Now as your church makes her pilgrim journey in the world, you always accompany her by the power of the Holy Spirit and lead her along the paths of time to the eternal joy of your kingdom. And so with all the angels and saints, we too sing the hymn of your glory as without end we acclaim. Indeed, holy and to be glorified, O God, who love the human race and always walk with us on our journey of life. Blessed indeed, too, is your Son present in our midst when we are gathered by his love, and when, as once for the disciples and now for us, he opens the scripture and he breaks the bread. Therefore, Father most merciful, we ask that you send forth your Holy Spirit to sanctify these gifts of bread and wine, that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. On the day before he was to suffer, on the night of the Last Supper, he took bread and he said the blessing. He broke the bread. He gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body. It will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice. He gave you thanks, he gave the chalice to his disciples, and he said, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. Save us, Savior of the world, for by your cross and resurrection you have set us free. You have set us free. Therefore, Holy Father, as we celebrate the memorial of Christ, your Son, our Savior, whom you led through his passion and death on the cross to the glory of the resurrection, and whom you have seated at your right hand, we proclaim the work of your love until he comes again, as we offer you the bread of life and the chalice of blessing. Look with favor upon the oblation of your church in which we show forth the paschal sacrifice of Christ that has been handed on to us. And grant that by the power of the spirit of your love, we may be counted now until the day of eternity among the members of your Son, in whose body and blood we have communion. And so having, been called, having called us to your table, Lord, confirm us in unity, that together with our Holy Father, Pope Francis, with our Bishop, Donald Kettler, and with all the bishops, priests, and deacons, and your entire people, we may always walk in your ways of faith and hope and strive to bring joy and trust into our world. Remember all of our sisters and our brothers who have fallen asleep in the peace of your Christ and all the dead whose faith you alone have known. Admit them to rejoice in the light of your face and in the resurrection give them the fullness of life. 
Grant also to us when our earthly pilgrimage is finished that we may come to an eternal dwelling place and live with you forever. There in communion with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, Blessed Joseph, her spouse, Saint Michael, and all the apostles and martyrs and all the saints, we shall praise and exalt you through Jesus Christ, your Son. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. At the command of our Savior, informed by his divine teaching, as Jesus taught us, we pray together. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation but deliver us from evil. Lord, we pray, deliver us from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you, Look not upon our sins, but upon the faith of your church. Graciously grant to her peace and unity according to your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. Amen. May the peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Let's offer to each other the sign of peace. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, to only say the word, my soul shall be.
Let us pray. O God, nourished by this sacred gift, we give you thanks and we ask your mercy that by the pouring forth of your spirit the grace of integrity may endure in those your heavenly power has entered. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. You do that very well. Good for you. Good for you. I think there are some announcements. Thank you in advance for supporting the local work of Catholic charities throughout the year. Make God's Love Visible campaign provides critically needed help while preserving hope for the central Minnesotans by providing food, shelter, clothing, behavioral health services, and more. At the end of the pews, you will find the Make God's Love Visible envelope. Please take one home with you as you are leaving and consider helping out with this great cause. Thank you. St. Paul's Church is holding their Holiday Bazaar next Saturday at St. Paul's Gymnasium with a bake sale, crafters, silent auction, and luncheon. Please consider checking this event out. We are selling quilt tickets for the beautiful ribbon candy quilt donated, sewn, and quilted by Diane and Tom Kramer following the Mass in the gathering space. The drawing will be held Saturday, February 19th at St. Michael's Together as One Dinner and Silent Auction event held at St. Michael's Church. Purchase your quilt tickets today. They are $2 a ticket, or you can buy them during the week at the parish office. November is the month to remember family and friends who have gone before us. In the gathering space, there is a remembrance book to record the names of loved ones. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. May we bow our heads and pray for God's blessing. Most holy God, giver of all life and goodness, bless us. Jesus, our Savior, our Teacher, our Lord, walk with us on our journey of faith. Holy Spirit of God, guide us, watch over us, make us strong, loving, and wise. And may the blessing of Almighty God come down upon us, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. I've been delighted to be able to help Father Timothy this weekend. This is a very big chair, and I'm a short person. <laughs> When I sit in it, my feet don't touch the floor. <laughs> Go now in peace, glorifying the Lord with your lives. Yes. Thanks be to God. Be our protection against the wickedness and snares of the devil. May God rebuke him, we humbly pray. And do thou, o Prince of Heaven and Host, by the power of God, trust in the hell Satan and all the evil spirits who prowl about the world for the ruin of souls. Amen. Amen. I shall not fear.